So I'm going to head into the woods and have a look, see if I can find some more edible mushrooms. Now I know I've been uploading a lot of mushroom videos in the last few weeks or months, but uh, it just seems like the appropriate thing to do, you know? I mean, I'm living in a temperate forest ecosystem, and there's an absolute explosion of just thousands of different types of mushrooms at the moment. And obviously, you know, eating locally and eating seasonally and foraging for wild foods is something that definitely interests me a lot. It's something that I'm learning more about, so, you know, it definitely seems like the appropriate seasonal subject matter for, for videos. So, or for lots of videos, in fact. So, yeah, I'm going to head into these woods here and see what we can find. Okay, cool. Looks like we found something. So this is Lycopodon perlatum, which is, you know, more commonly known as the common puffball. Now there's many different types of puffball mushrooms. Um, all of them are edible. Uh, the most famous one is going to be the giant puffball, which is often much larger than a human head. Uh, these ones are really not at all as large as that, but they are much more common, hence the name. Now, they are definitely edible, they're really uh, very nutritious, and they do have some very important medicinal actions. Now, they're very antimicrobial and antiviral, have a very powerful uh, action in those areas, and it's also, interestingly, uh, very highly antifungal, which is something in the mushroom kingdom, when you find a particular type of medicinal mushroom that has a very powerful antifungal property, it really indicates that that mushroom is quite high up the, I guess, the kind of hierarchy of the fungal kingdom, because when you look at some of the, the top medicinal mushrooms, uh, they all seem to possess a very pronounced antifungal property, which really shows that they have very high a very high kind of intelligence that allows them to distinguish themselves from the lesser, I guess you could say, lesser species of their kingdom. And so they can actually uh, defeat and knock out lesser fungal species from inhabiting other organisms. Now these are extremely easy to identify. You can see that they're covered in these, these kind of prickly spines all over the surface of the actual fruiting body, and these tend to kind of brush off quite easily. Quite often they can, you know, stick to your skin. Well, not really stick to it, but they just kind of come off and adhere to the skin slightly. So, you know, that's one distinguishing characteristic of these mushrooms. Another one is they have this kind of dark brown lump, or a kind of a nipple at the center of the very top of the mushroom. And that's actually the point at which the spores are going to be released when that time comes, when these mushrooms mature. Now when these mushrooms are young, they are actually quite nice and soft and squashy. They're really quite a lot like marshmallow inside as far as the texture goes, and they should be really white, really nice, soft, squashy, white marshmallow flesh inside. And, you know, you can see, I mean, if we split this one open here, you know, you can you can see it's very, very soft. It has a very pleasant mushroom smell to it. But when they mature, you know, they get get a bit darker. They get a bit tougher. the The surface becomes somewhat like kind of scorched paper, really. And at that point, they're going to be the the entire fruiting body is absolutely going to be bursting with spores which is when this kind of brown nipple on the top will open up and the spores will just project outwards like a kind of smoke 
and you know at that point you can kind of just give them a little or just nudge them slightly and this big puff of smoky spore material is just going to come shooting out the top. Now another really key distinguishing feature of these mushrooms is that although it doesn't first appear when you see the you know like a flush of them like this they all actually do have a very noticeable stem which you can see you know if we pick this one they all have a stem absolutely all of them will have a stem so they are really quite easy to identify but you want to make sure that you do identify them correctly there is one well, actually, when they're in their really young stages of development, you know, some people, I think, have mistaken them for some of the um, young Amanita species, which are obviously, a lot of those are really quite poisonous, and some of them are deadly. But really, the, the main one that people get it mixed up with is the earth ball, which does look quite similar in many respects, but on upon closer inspection, you know, there really are some very key differences between them. So uh, the earth ball is really much tougher. It's really not the same. It really, you know, it's, it's not very pleasant to eat. Some people have eaten it. They have become poisoned by it to a degree. It's not really that dangerously poisonous, but uh, it is something that people can, you know, make a mistake in identification. So hopefully we can come across some of them before I go home, just to make the comparison. Now another thing is when you find a flush of these mushrooms, you know, they're normally in rather a large group like this one here, but what that normally means is there's going to be more very close by, you know, they're very seldom you'll just find one flush of them on their own. So I'm not even 10 seconds away from that flush that I was just at, and we have more here. And so there's probably more, you know. Just need to have a look around. They stand out quite easily because they're only really out in autumn under the canopy of the forest in the temperate climates and you know you can see that the ground is so autumnal in its shade and these you know they, they stand out really quite prominently so they're very easy to find. So I've actually found an earth ball which is the you know, the, the kind of common equivalent of the common puffball that people make, you know, the identification mistake with so much of the time. Now this one, like I said before, is mildly poisonous. Um, it has poisoned some people in the past, although not particularly seriously. Um, but you can see it doesn't really have the spines as such. It has, it's a bit rough on the surface. It's definitely a lot more solid. I think this is this is quite an old one. It must have been here for a while. But if we look underneath, it really doesn't have the same stem at all. You know, the stem on the common pu common puffball is actually kind not not really large or elongated, but it's definitely more pronounced than this. This is a very short, stumpy, and quite slim stem in comparison to the the kind of girth of the mushroom. Okay, so I broke it in half. And this is really the telltale sign, you know, it's like really dark, kind of dark grey, bit purple, kind of almost black. And obviously that doesn't look at all appetising, so it doesn't really smell that good either. So this is really the telltale sign, you know, I mean, you can really distinguish between the common puffball and the earth ball just from, you know, from looking at the, the surface of both of the fruiting bodies, they're really quite easy to tell apart, but if you really can't, breaking them open is really going to be the key, because the common puffball is going to have that white, soft, marshmallow-like flesh when it's young. When it gets a bit older, it goes a kind of yellowy, tan, brown colour and begins to be full of spores. And you can see this one's really quite ageing here, this earth ball with all these insects crawling around inside it. Um, but this you know, the earth ball is very, very tough and very dark and, you know, it kind of looks quite carbon-like in its interior, even when it's quite young and, you know, obviously it maintains that rather unappealing uh, interior throughout. So, you know, that's definitely the best way that you can tell these apart if you're uh, struggling with that at all. So that's the common puff ball. It's really quite common, as the name suggests, in the temperate forests. 
and it's very very nutritious it's really quite enjoyable to eat and uh, it has a lot of very genuine medicinal properties that are very important extracts of this mushroom have been used with a lot of success in treating many serious disease conditions so you know this is a really really excellent medicine it's not that hard to come by and it's in season right now so if you're living in a temperate forested ecosystem like I am it, you know there's every chance that you can go and find this right now